This video will show you the correct way to perform a pap smear to make sure that you collect an adequate sample from the cervix and that it is suitable for testing using the liquid-based cytology or LBC technique. All asymptomatic women who are between 30 and 50 years old, HIV negative and remain gynecologically asymptomatic are considered low risk for cervical cancer. Women above the age of 50 can also be offered screening if they were never screened before. Repeat the pap smear every 10 years following a negative adequate result, provided that she remains gynecologically asymptomatic. All HIV positive women, regardless of age, are considered high risk for cervical cancer and should be screened at the time of HIV positive diagnosis and every three years thereafter following a negative adequate result for the duration of the woman's life should she remain gynecologically asymptomatic. Once the HIV positive woman is diagnosed with an abnormal lesion, the follow-up and management of the patient will be altered. For instance, repeat the smear in one year or refer the patient for a colposcopy and so on. Please make sure to ask your female patients when they last had a pap smear and offer them one if they have not had their routine screening. Symptomatic women are women of any age who present with any irregular gynecological symptoms. Symptoms to look out for include abnormal vaginal bleeding, persistent or foul-smelling vaginal discharge, heavier and longer menstrual periods, and bleeding during or after intercourse. Women who are more than 20 weeks pregnant should not receive a pap smear. If a woman is menstruating, it is best to not screen her, but it is imperative to please request her to return for her pap smear when she is not menstruating. At your discretion, if you suspect that the blood is from abnormal vaginal bleeding, then still proceed with collecting a sample. Ensure that the clinical findings are documented on the relevant request form. Consent to do a pelvic exam is always required. Make sure you have her full permission to proceed. Prepare all equipment and consumables before starting the procedure. Note the expiry date on the sample collection vial. Do not use expired vials. Ensure the entire plastic seal is removed from the lid of the vial and discarded. Record the patient's full name, ID number or unique identifier on the vial. Loosen the cap of the vial. The patient information and her medical history needs to be filled in properly on the requisite N2 cytology form. Ensure that all mandatory fields shaded in light green are filled in. Ensure that under the field spec, you fill in LBC for specimen. Under the field specimen type, you tick the box for liquid-based specimen. Under the field origin of smear or specimen, you indicate the correct origin of the specimen. There are two sampling devices available to take the sample. There is a combi brush and a cervix brush. This is a combi brush. It is the recommended brush which has a hard, longer centre with fine bristles and is preferred for use on patients with a smaller or tighter cervical os. Never use the combi brush on pregnant women, women with a fragile or bleeding cervix and women using an IUCD. This is a cervix brush, which is the universal brush with no contraindications. It has a softer centre and can be used on any patient. Making sure that the sample is adequately collected and suitable for testing is critical. A sample needs to be collected correctly to ensure it is an adequate representation of the cervix, ecto and endo, and must be suitable to conduct several tests and provide as accurate diagnoses as possible. If it is not adequate or suitable, a repeat specimen will be required. Prior to inserting the speculum, ensure the patient has emptied her bladder. Place the patient in a lithotomy position and ensure you have a good light source. Decide on the size of the speculum to use. You can use lukewarm water to lubricate and warm the speculum. Do not use lubricant as this can interfere with the results. Spread the labia and insert the closed speculum into the vagina. 
As you advance the speculum, gently rotate the blades into a horizontal position with the handle down. Insert it fully or until the resistance is felt. Open the speculum and visualize the cervix. Sometimes the cervix is hard to locate. If you cannot visualize the cervical os, ask the patient to cough. For obese patients, use a condom with a cut on top over the speculum to prevent the vaginal walls from obscuring the vaginal pathway. Put a pillow or a roll towel under the pelvic area under the back of the patient. Rotate the speculum up or down or sideways to locate the cervix until the cervical os is visualized. Remove any obscuring discharged blood or mucus with a cotton swab or gauze by lightly dabbing the cervix. Do not use a wiping motion. Refer the patient for further management if, after dabbing the cervix, you find that the discharge is purulent, if there is profuse bleeding, or if a cervix appears clinically suspicious for malignancy. Decide on the suitable sampling device to use once the cervix is visualized. In this video, we will use the cervix brush. Insert the relevant sampling device into the endocervical canal deep enough to allow the shorter bristles to fully contact the ectocervix. Push gently and rotate the sampling device 360 degrees in a clockwise direction by rolling the shaft between your thumb and forefinger. If you are using the combi brush, rotate it twice. If you are using the cervix brush, rotate it five times. Should the cervix start bleeding, stop turning the sampling device immediately. If you are using a thin prep device, immediately rinse the sampling device into the vial with the preserve site solution by sweeping the bottom of the vial 10 times, forcing the bristles apart, and then, using your thumb and forefinger, swirl the device in the fluid thoroughly. Inspect the brush. If there is still material on the brush, then the sweep and the swirl steps should be repeated. Thereafter, the brush may be safely discarded. Never leave the head of the brush in the vial. Make sure to tighten the cap securely so that the black line on the cap passes the black line on the vial. Do not over tighten. Gently remove the speculum while visualizing the vaginal walls for any abnormal lesions, noting any abnormalities on the N2 form. Make sure you book your patient to return to get her results in six weeks. It is very important that results are communicated back to the patient. Remove three of the peelable barcode labels from the back of the request form and place one barcode horizontally onto the label of the specimen vial. Ensure that this label does not obscure any patient details. Place the second label on the pap smear registry and the third on the duplicate page of the registry. For more information on cervical cancer prevention, please visit the Knowledge Hub and enrol in the Sexual and Reproductive Health and Rights Training, Module 12.